What's going on everyone, it's Rifle here and thanks for checking out this video. In this one I'm going to be getting into some interesting stuff that I think you guys are going to enjoy. Such as a secret exotic, a hidden quest, Saint-14's body floating in mid-air, I'm pretty sure anyways, because this body has a similar color scheme as Saint-14. Don't worry, I'll get more into this later on in the video. And also I'm going to be going over a nerf, Saint-14 shotgun, and a few other things. Hope you guys end up enjoying this video. So first things first, I wanted to share with you guys a tweet that was shared by Bungie, as you guys can see here, at 10 a.m. Pacific, Friday, December 8th, mark your calendars everybody, Eater of Worlds, the raid lair for Curse of Osiris, will open to fire teams. The race for World First will be on and they will be watching and so will the community. I don't know if I'll be watching exactly, but uh, a lot of the community will, just being honest. So yeah, just to let you guys know, in case you guys don't, the raid lair is coming soon. Anyways, next up, I got you guys a tweet that was shared from Deej. And it has to do with a nerf already with one of the weapons in the Curse of Osiris. And that weapon is the Prometheus Lens, aka the solar version of the Cold Heart. As you guys can see here, DJ ended up saying Prometheus Lens is shipped with a bug. We'll address the issue and talk solutions in this week at Bungie on the blog. So basically what he's talking about here is Prometheus Lens is basically extremely unfair in the PvP world. So if you guys have got your hands on this and you played within the PvP, you guys should know what I'm talking about. Hopefully they end up patching this before trials. I'm not exactly sure if they will, but if Deej is tweeting this out right now, I have a feeling the blog is going to come before trials just because people are going to end up taking advantage with the Prometheus lens and go into trials and it'll be basically unfair going against the other team that doesn't really have a stacked team with the weapon. Anyways, next up I wanted to get into this secret exotic and it is Sagira's shell. At the moment this exotic is undiscovered and no one is talking about it nor knows how to get it. But the perks on this is extremely useful for being on Mercury. I have a feeling there's going to be some kind of quest or something new that'll come on board here soon in Destiny 2 with an update or it's already in the game and no one has figured out how to exactly get it yet which I don't know I kind of hope that's the case honestly because there isn't much secrets in Destiny 2 so it'd be nice for this ghost to be unlockable by doing some kind of certain puzzle or something specific in the game to unlock it because once again there isn't many weapons armor or anything like that in Destiny 2 but there was in Destiny 1 as you guys may recall the strike specific loot I loved grinding for those I would love for Bungie to actually return that concept who knows they might end up but anyways, the perks on this exotic shell, starting with You Are Welcome, as you guys can see here, detects caches and resources within a 75 meter range on Mercury. Definitely handy. Next up, this is a really interesting perk. It's called Omni Telemetry. Generate gunsmith telemetry data on any elemental weapon kills. So yeah, like I said before, definitely a handy perk to have. And lastly up, it's another Mercury perk, as you guys can see here. Increases glimmer and chance to obtain additional faction consumables on the planet. So yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting exotic to get our hands on, and who knows how we're going to exactly obtain it. Once again, I'm hoping it's something where we're going to have to like solve a puzzle in order to unlock this. But who knows, it might come in a further update when the raid layer actually hits. Anyways, now I wanted to get into this new secret that was found. You can find this secret by starting up the adventure called Up and Up. And you're going to have to progress through this mission, you know, take out the certain daemons in the infinite forest until you get to the dark future. Once you get to the dark future, you just want to head in this general direction until you get to this area right here. That's when you know you're close. It's a pretty easy area to find in the dark future because this is a pretty giant tower here. But anyways, you just want to head straight ahead and you'll find this door. And there's actually a little crack in this door that you can see through. And I have to say, guys, this is extremely interesting. I'm going to get into a little bit about Saint-14's lore once I'm showing you this. But as you can see, you can see a body floating inside this tomb. I don't know how exactly it's floating, but if you whip out your sniper and zoom in, you can get a better look. I know what some of you guys might be thinking, wow, a sniper that's actually useful for something in Destiny 2. But yeah, as you guys can see, this body is just floating, and the reason why I believe this to be Saint-14 is because it has a similar color scheme to Saint-14. As you guys may know, he rocks that purple and silver look, and there's purple ribbons over the body, but once again, I'm not 100% if this is Saint-14, but I have a feeling it is. There's a new legendary shotgun called Perfect Paradox. 
and this shotgun has not been discovered yet in Destiny 2 since the Curse of Osiris release. But who knows, maybe just people have been unlucky to get it, or it's just not exactly in the game, and this is going to be a quest of some sort in the future. Or maybe this is a part of some kind of hidden quest, which that's what I'm thinking it might be. We just have to do something specific within this adventure or something. Anyways, if you look closely on the side of this shotgun, you can notice XIV, which is Roman numerals for 14, and above the XIV, you can see the Saint symbol. So this is obviously a reference to Saint 14. So putting two and two together, I think we might end up unlocking this shotgun by doing something specific in this quest or something specific for Saint 14. But then again, I could be completely wrong about this. I just have a huge feeling that we're going to end up unlocking this shotgun by a quest involving Saint 14. But anyways, the perks on this, in case some of you are wondering, it comes with rapid fire frame, fires full auto with deeper ammo reserves, faster reload when weapon is empty, and also for the uh, barrels, it has full choke, tightened barrel reduces projectile spread when aiming down sights at the cost of precision damage, rifled barrel, ranged shotgun barrel, increases the range and greatly decreases handling speed, and lastly it comes with smooth bore. Smooth shotgun barrel greatly increases range at the cost of more projectile speed. And for the other tree, it comes with flared magwell, optimized for fast reloading, slightly increases stability, greatly increases reload speed, Steady rounds, this magazine is optimized for recoil control, greatly increases stability, slightly decreases range, and lastly, accurized rounds. This weapon can fire longer distances, and this increases the range. And for the last perk, it comes with Rampage. Kills with this weapon temporarily grant increased damage, and it can stack up to three times. Now, something that is extremely interesting about this shotgun is the lore. First off, let me tell you guys a little bit about the lore of Saint-14. He was last heard telling the speaker that he was going to go to Mercury to find Osiris. I'm not going to read all of this Grimoire card, I'm just going to skip down to the bottom starting here. Saint-14 says, Father, I don't think I have the energy to return. I'll rest here and come back to be honored when I return. Now, of course, he's not actually saying the speaker is his father. He's like calling him a father like you would call a priest or something. Anyways, the speaker says, of course, son, but Saint-14 interrupts saying, there is something concerning you? More fallen march on the city? Speaker says, no, not this time. I have word that Osiris was seen on Mercury, the Calorous Basin. He's turned his mind back to the Vex. Mercury, too many channels to know. You activate one, you start to feed its veins. He threatens our peace. Your duty, my son, you must never forget. I cannot. The ghost then killed the feed and waited for its guardian's words. Saint 14 said, Ghost, prepare my Vex arsenal and plot a course for Mercury. That old man is about to wake up hell. So from that, we can understand now, Saint 14 was last heard going to Mercury to hunt for Osiris to stop some kind of plan that Osiris had. Anyways, this is where it gets extremely interesting about this story. In the lore for the Perfect Paradox shotgun, it reads, Saint 14 says, I never found Osiris, but I've killed enough Vex to end a war. And they, in turn, struck a fatal blow. They completed a mine with the sole function to drain the light from me. It worked very well. Don't worry, not that you worry much. It took them centuries to build, keyed to the unique frequency of my light, and I sit atop its shattered husk. I mourn that I will never reach the heights you have. To me, you represent everything a guardian can become. Yours is a thriving city, so different from mine. My whole 14th life, I fought to make my city yours. I never finished. All I have left is this weapon. The crypt arts say you crafted it yourself. Build it out of scraps and light and sheer will. Inside the infinite forge, I'll make sure it finds its way back to you. When you gave it to me, I swore I would make it my duty to follow your example. I'm still trying. So out of this, in my understanding, he ends up giving us this weapon. How exactly? I'm not sure. I have a feeling this isn't going to be a random drop though. And I mean something else to take a look at inside this tomb where I believe Saint-14's body is floating, there is Vex around inside here. And as you guys just heard in that lore, he had said he killed enough Vex to end a war. So apparently he has been fighting Vex for quite some time out here on Mercury. So it could be that the Vex is experimenting with him inside here. I mean, I don't know exactly. 
Be sure to leave your guys' thoughts of what you think is going on inside here because I find this extremely interesting. I miss this part about Destiny, how they added these secrets where we would have to find out what to exactly do. In Destiny 2, everything has pretty much been straightforward, and I'm not going to lie, that has kind of bored me about the game, but this, this is awesome. This reminds me of the old days when we were talking about the sleeper simulator and all that. I don't know if you guys remember those days. Some of you might. Anyways, yeah, I guess that's about wrapping up this video, everybody. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. I'm out of here, though. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. Until next time, peace.